How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Today, I wanted to share with you just a couple of tips, DIY tips that I wish that I would have known earlier that I could have used with our RV. So to start off this week, I'm always looking for RV tips that are great to be able to pass along to other RVers, whether they work good for us or a different style of RVing. I'm always on the lookout to be able to pass these tips along. And so this week I was watching one of our friends channel, How to RV Jason, and he was talking about how their RV was sinking and they had to re-level it. Well, I saw some accessories that I had to dive more into that he had on his channel. Uh, so we're gonna talk about that and another tip that he had on his channel uh, that was about how to monitor the power that you're using on a 30 amp service, which really can come in handy for 50 amp RVs. He has a 30 amp RV and how he was able to implement it for that, but it'll be a little bit different for how you would implement that for 50 amp RVs. So when you have a 50 amp RV and you're plugging into a 30 amp service, it's a little bit harder to manage that power when you're used to plugging in to a 50 amp service and you don't want to pop that breaker or melt a wire or cause any other problems. So uh, this is a great little tip, a DIY thing that you can do on your RV to help you manage that power. So this DIY tip is so that you can have one of these monitors, not to monitor your battery system, but the AC power inside of your RV. So for Jason with a 30 amp RV, he connected this in to be able to read what is going through his panel to not exceed that 30 amp. So if he wants to turn something extra on and he wants to run the microwave or something, he can just look over and say, oh, you know what? I already got uh, 25 amps of stuff running in the RV. I need to either turn something off or I need to wait until the water heater catches up so that I can use the microwave. So it helps him with that power management. But with the 50 amp RV, we have two hot legs in there. Now, just as a side note, this is not how I would set it up for a, a finished product. So this is just to demonstrate how you would monitor uh, your power going through for a 50 amp RV on one monitor. Jason, on his channel, you could see where he cut out a section on here because he had the converter that was underneath there. So he had a little bit of space in there. It was all enclosed and protected and mounted well. So this is just a display what is going on here. So you can see on this monitor, you have your voltage that's here and your amperage. So this is nice to know if you have low voltage in the park and if you should do something different. And this one is telling you how many amps you are drawing. This is like having a clamp meter permanently installed on how much power is coming into your RV. So the way these clamp meters work, and this is similar to the sensor that comes with that other monitor, is you're just able to clip this right around the main wire, and this way it's going to detect how much power is going through here, how many amps are going through that little clamp meter. Now you could, on a 50 amp RV, install two of these monitors and then just add those two numbers together. But I love the simplicity of just having one monitor because when you're on a 50 amp service, it's really not that big of a deal because you have so much available power. But when you're on that 30 amp service, it's nice to glance over at the monitor and know where you are at. So instead of installing this on the hot leg uh, like you can on a 30 amp RV, we're just gonna put it on the neutral wire. Now the setup is pretty simple. We have the sensor in here and we have our neutral and our hot leg coming into the monitor over here. So the sensor is pretty simple. It just clips right on over there. You don't even have to disconnect the wire, but that is the main neutral wire that comes down into that bus bar. Then we have a wire feeding the monitor that just connects into the neutral bus bar at the bottom. And if you had a converter down here, oftentimes there'll be a, a splice to connect that converter into the system. So on the back of the monitor, you can see our neutral line and our hot leg coming in and then the input for our sensor. So it's, it's pretty simple. So for example, if you look at the monitor, you can see how many amps it's just normally drawing. And then if we turn on the fireplace on low, you can see that go up, that's on line one. And on line two, we have the tea kettle. So uh, usually those would balance each other out, but since we're on a 30 amp service and we're using the neutral wire to tell us how many amps we're drawing, we can see that those two combine together to give us an accurate representation of what we're actually using in the RV. Now, I think this is a great simple solution to be able to look at that monitor and just get that information really fast. No more wondering about why that breaker tripped on a 30 amp service. Now, the next thing that I gleaned from Jason's video was the water filter. We've been using the whole house water filter with the RV and it's fantastic. I much prefer using a, a carbon block filter that brings it down to five microns rather than a granular carbon filter that only takes it to 20 microns. Uh, there's less waste involved here. It's a 
it's a great solution. But the one that I saw on his channel, it really takes a step up and doubles down on what kind of filtration you can have for the RV. The reason why I like it is you can dial in exactly what you would like to filter for the RV at a good price point. We have really loved this style of a filter. In the long run, it's cheaper for the filters. Number two, it's less waste. And number three, it's just a better way to filter the water. It would be pretty tough to build this filter kit with those filters for, for cheaper than you can get it on Amazon right now. Now I'll leave a link down in the description to everything that we talked about today. So the double water filter, the water filter cartridges that we like, the solid carbon block filters, the monitor that we were looking at for the RV on a 30 amp service and to Jason's how to RV channel. All those are going to be down in the description. I forgot to mention why we only temporarily installed this on the RV. It's a two-fold answer. Number one, we have the Victron MultiPlus inverter and it has the power assist function. So if we go over 30 amps, it's able to assist and give us more usable power inside of the RV while we're using some of those uh, larger devices on a 30 amp service. Number two, we have uh, similar information through the power watchdog surge protector. And so I can pull that up on my phone. So if we didn't have the Victron MultiPlus, I still might install all this on the inside, even though I can get that information through my phone on the Power Watchdog app. But it's nice just to be able to glance over and look at this. And for 15 bucks, this is under $15 actually, it's nice to be able to have that function inside of the RV. So if you don't have something like a power assist inverter, something like this will come in really handy. And for that price under $15, that's really hard to pass up. So I think that's going to do it for today. I hope these tips help you out and help you enjoy the RVing experience even more. So as always, if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos about RVing, hit that subscribe button. And if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you next video.